Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be checking out the all new Vision OS 26 beta. It's been two weeks since Apple dropped the beta at WWDC and they just dropped an update. So I figured it was about time to do a video because hopefully some of the kinks have been worked out a little bit more as we know betas can be a bit buggy. So there still may be some bugs. Um, they, there's some really cool updates in this beta. Definitely one that I am super, super excited about. So let's hop into the headset and let's check it out. All right, so we're in the headset now. Let me go ahead and open up Control Center and I will start a screen recording here. So there we go, getting the screen recording going. And just the first thing out of the gate that we have new in Vision OS 26 is we have the new Control Center. This is honestly a really nice overhaul, I think. It gives us a lot nicer user experience. So you see we've got here, we've got mirror, you know, all of our regular stuff, but it's definitely put together a lot nicer. So I'll go ahead and exit out of that. And one of the first updates that they gave us and the first things that they did that I'll show you is the new persona. So I'm hoping this is coming through. This is the new persona here. And over here was a recording that I did of a persona on Vision OS 2 dot whatever. And as you can see here, like my face is not as textured. My ears are kind of weird. I've got weird hair up there. And over here, I actually, look closer to, you know, it's not perfect, but it definitely is a lot better than it was. So that is the new personas and they look nice. Um, we're getting to that point where maybe one day it'll actually look like the person you're talking to and you won't know they're in a headset. So that's really, really cool that they did that. Let me go ahead and while we're in photo, the photos app here, I'll go ahead and show you the new um, spatial stuff that they added. So they've added a new spatial um, like algorithm to work with the spatial photos. And I hope you can see this. I took this photo in Arches National Park and there is honestly a lot more depth in that photo, in my opinion. Now, I, I looked at a few, you know, spatial photos over the last year plus in the headset. And this to me has the best depth that I've seen in any of them to this point. Um, and you can open it up obviously here and you can, let me see if I can get this video playing here. There we go. So I'll back up just a little bit and there we go. That is a spatial video playing in the headset. And it honestly looks a little bit better probably in this window in my opinion than it does in the full view. But that is the new spatial kind of content they, that they've added to our photos. And I really like it and I'm glad it's here. Now, one of the other things that they have added, I'll close this out here on the spatial note, let me go ahead and open Safari here, is they have added spatial browsing. So if I open this up, you'll see here, it goes into this spatial kind of that, that thing we're used to where everything kind of goes like white or whatever color it is around us. And it's now like an environment. And it's really cool, honestly, because this lets you focus more on the content if you're reading and less about what's around you, which is nice. But one other cool thing they've added here, and it makes spatial browsing in particular really, really nice, is they have added look to scroll. So I am not moving my hands, I'm not pinching, I'm not doing you know this number here and grabbing the web page and, and dragging it. I'm just looking. I'm looking where I wanna go. Okay, there we go. So I've read enhanced shared spatial experiences, people near and far. All right, well, there's Vision OS 26, improvements to the setup process, 1,000 variations. And see, it lets you look and scroll, and it's really, really cool. And honestly, it's a lot nicer. And I'm just letting this go by here to get down to this photo here. But you can just look at the bottom of the photo. Now, another thing you can do is you can look up. If you look at the bar, it'll pop down, and then it won't scroll up. So you kind of have to look just above the photo and you'll notice there, it's still a little glitchy, still a little buggy. This is a beta after all. So we're definitely not getting, you know, perfect usability, but it will, the kinks will be worked out by the time, you know, it launches in the fall. So that is spatial browsing and it's really cool. Another thing they've added here while we're in Safari, and this works with any of their windows now, is that you grab this here and you can lock it to a flat surface. So now that is locked and I can, you know, lock it to any flat surface. I can't pull it away. Well, there, okay, I actually got it to pull away there. 
Um, I haven't been able to do that. I may have actually unlocked it. There we go. Yeah, so I had actually double tapped there and unlocked it. <clears throat> but if you tap it, you can unlock it, and then you have you know free movability, and you can just look at a flat surface, and there you go. You pinch and hold, and it locks it into place. You can also now look at the X over here, and you can pinch and hold, and you have hide other apps now, close Safari, and again, lock that into place. So really cool. If you look over here to the right, another thing they've added is they've now added shared experiences. So we can now share the experiences with another Vision Pro, which is really, really cool. I'm glad that they added that. Um, so if you have a friend or you have someone who has it, you can now share watching a movie, whatever you're viewing, and it's really cool. You can also share it to an iPad, an iPhone, um, you know, a Mac, whatever it may be, anything that does AirPlay. So that is shared experiences, and this kind of gives you a little rundown of that. You can see the new personas here, and then that's what we were talking about. This is the spatial browsing. Uh, I was trying to find this, the shared experience. Oh, also, here on this, we also now can use PS2 um, controllers, the Sense controllers, for uh, gaming in the future, which is going to be really cool. I don't have a PS2 VR or, I mean, I don't have the VR2 controllers, so I can't you know, show you what those look like, but really cool, kind of like the Quest. We're now going to get Quest-style gaming, hopefully. And we can also use the Logitech Muse Pen here um, for uh, 3D design and stuff like that. So that is really, really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll look to my right here. And as you can see, one of the things they've added also in 26 is widgets. And this is one of the, this is a photo widget. And you can have multiple different types of these. So this is the panoramic uh, or pano photo widget. And if you look and pinch, let's see here. Ah, there we go. It's going to get my photos out there. So if you look at it and you pinch and hold, you get this little pop out and you can change like the color of the border. You can, you know, change your photo. You can go down here. You can make it bigger. You can make it smaller. Um, and that's just that particular style. And then... If, one other cool thing about the panoramic ones, if I lean in here, you can look around and you can kind of see, like, it, it's like it's another world. You're looking through a window into another world, and that is really cool. It's, it's a lot cooler in the headset than it probably is on, you know, the Vision Pro recording, but it's there, and it's cool. So let me go ahead. I'm going to spin around here. I'll show you a couple other widgets. So we've got another photo widget. That's another one of the borders there. You can see it. Uh, again, you can pinch and hold. You can make these things uh, bigger, smaller, whatever you want to do. So I can make that really big there. Leave that there. I've got my weather app. And as you can see here, if I lean in, um, it's actually got like a border. Like it's, it's sunken in. I say a border, but it's like depth. It's like cut into the wall. And it's really cool. And so we've also got, I've got a battery widget here. So it tells me how much is left on my Vision Pro. And I've got a clock. I've got another, this is a spatial um, photo app or photo background there. It's going to change there on me. Again, beta. There are some glitches and stuff. Got my stock market stuff going on over there. And I'll go ahead and open the, the widgets app here. And I will show you um, just a few other widgets that they have. So you can do stuff like Lightroom, Music, um, Notion, Pinterest, I mean, t Tesla. And these are all the ones that are the apps that are installed that just are there currently. So widgets are really cool. I like them. This would be like a desktop setup. Imagine you're working here and you've got all your stuff to the right and the left. And it's, it's kind of a really cool desk setup when you're sitting in the headset. One of the other things that they've added is the ability, finally, thank you, Apple, to create folders. So you'll notice here, I've got messages, I've got Keynote, but those are Vision OS apps. So we used to have the app folder here for like the iOS apps, stuff like that, and the iPad OS. But now we can take apps and we can actually put them into folders. Thank you, Apple. It's about time. And I'm really glad it's a quality of life thing. And I'm really glad it's here. Um, and then we're going to also have new environment, uh, or we're also going to have a new environment. And that will be Jupiter. That will probably be around the fall. I don't have that currently, as you can see here, but we'll have a new environment. And with environments comes something really cool. So we now have a 90 hertz occlusion um, refresh rate that they've added. And I don't know if it's coming through the headset, but I mean, my hands look a lot better. It's not as 
like glitchy. It's still kind of glitchy, but it is a lot better. Another cool thing they've added is the ability. So here's, I've got my iPhone here. The Vision OS, or the Vision Pro now unlocks your iPhone from inside the headset. So you no longer have to fumble around, try to get your password, figure that out. It just, you swipe up and unlocks. And also now inside of environments, you can see your phone. At least I don't remember that being in Vision OS 2.0. I'm pretty sure this is new because I used to be able to see my watch, but I used to hold my phone. And as you can see here, it would just like, it grays out like that. And now I actually get to see my phone, which is really, really nice while I'm in an environment. Um, and so with all of that, we've also got the new shared ability. We've got the, um, some new accessibility features that are going to be added with this. And again, those are kind of a whole nother thing that, they, that I could go over and get really in depth into, but I'm gonna go ahead and hop into what I think is probably the coolest feature that they've added to the Vision Pro, is the ability to view 360 degree content. You know I love my Insta360 cameras, and I love shooting 360 content when I'm on vacation, and so I went ahead and I exported a couple videos here to show you. Now, right out of the gate, you cannot view 360 images from either the Files app or the Photos app. I have tried, it doesn't work. Another thing to note is that you cannot view, at this point, you cannot view 360 videos inside of the Photos app in the Vision Pro. You have to export them from the Studio app on your Mac or whatever you have, and or your iPad or iPhone and export them as 360 videos. I'll go ahead and show you how to do that here real quick after this, but let's go ahead, I'll launch this video. This is a video I took from Mesa Verde. And I will go ahead and put this into 360 mode here. And this is just awesome. So here we go. I'm gonna hit play and click that out. And right there, I can basically relive walking through the Pueblos in Mesa Verde in my Vision Pro. And this is just so cool. I mean, I'm trying to be really steady here. So I'm gonna to try to move really, really slow. But there's the canyon down there. I mean, if you I can turn around, you have to turn your entire body up there uh, where that person's standing. That's where we started the hike and you climb down ladders. It's really, really cool. And so, but you can, I mean, now imagine being able to film and then come back after filming and be able to see the content. Like right here, I'm gonna go walk uh, past this little fire pit right here. I forgot the exact name of it. Um, but as you can see here, I have the top down view and I can get a really nice view. Maybe I missed this while I was walking. I wasn't paying attention, but I could go back and I could look at it. And it's just awesome that this is there. And also like I can see over this wall here where when I was there, I couldn't see over this wall and it's almost like being there, right? Like I can actually look over and see. It's just, this is really cool. I am super excited that we now can view 360 degree videos or 360 degree content from the you know Insta360 or the GoPros in the Vision Pro. It's super awesome and I cannot wait to get through more of my content that I've shot because I have shot videos in all the national parks that I've been to. I mean Yosemite and Yellowstone and I have a ton of 360 degree content and this is just a really cool way to view it. Um, but again, you cannot view this stuff in the Photos app. You need to export it into uh, the Files app. You can, you can airdrop it or you can um, you know, obviously load it into a folder that you may have on your iCloud that auto you know, syncs between all your Apple devices and then you would be able to view it here. But again, you just, 360 photos don't work yet. I'm hoping Apple will give us that ability because it would be really, really cool if they did. Um, some of the devices that work with this is obviously the X5, any 360 camera, I would assume, but guaranteed Insta360 stuff, and then um, GoPros 360, and then also the 180 degree um, shots that you can do on Canon. So you got that, um, <clears throat> you got that 360 or 180 degree lens rather for the Canon cameras, and that you can view in here as well, which is super, super cool. And I'm super glad that they added this. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through real quick just how to um, get this content exported out. So 
I'm not gonna show you on the phone, but if you have an iPhone or an iPad in the Insta360 app, you can go to the app and you just do export, make sure you do it as 360, and then export it, that file to the files app on your phone or your iPad. And then obviously if, if you've done it to the iCloud version, not just locally on your phone, because you'll have the iCloud folder, then you'll be able to view it on the Vision Pro or you can export it to your files and then airdrop it. So I'm gonna hop over to the computer and I'll show you how to do that on the computer here real fast, just so you know. All right, so I've got the Insta360 Studio app open here. I am running on macOS Sequoia. Uh, this was kind of a test to show you that you don't have to be on macOS 26 to do this. And you can be on just, you know, a stable version of macOS. But I've got all my content loaded in here, got all my videos from my trip, play them as usual. Uh, but what you wanna do is you wanna go up over to export over here. You wanna make sure that you click the 360 video section, go ahead and name your file. So obviously I named it Mesa Verde here. And then you wanna, I go ahead and jack up the bit rate all the way just to make it as clean as I can. Make sure your resolution is in 8K, H.264 or H.265, whatever your choice is. And then, you know, you've got the media type here and then go ahead and click export. And as soon as that is done exporting, you will have your content and it'll go into the file here or the folder here, the task center, as you can see. So just real quick, I wanted to show you, so I did drag a photo here from my 360 just to show you that if, you know, it doesn't work and I dragged it into here. This is great sand dunes and I did export it as a 360 image and it did not work. So you click export here and then I started the export. I went ahead and named it. I didn't get it to actually um, be viewable in the headset as I've mentioned before. But that is pretty much how you do that on the Insta360 Studio app. All right, well that has been my review and kind of demo of Vision OS 26. I am super excited about some of the features that Apple has given us, especially the 360 um, viewing ability. I cannot wait for them to continue to expand on this. And I know that Insta will definitely make use of that. So. 360 cameras are gonna get more and more prevalent, I think, in the future, especially as we get more into the AR, VR, you know, world. But I'm hoping that they'll continue to refine it, maybe open it up into the actual Photos app in the Vision Pro so I don't have to load it from files. But besides that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, comment, subscribe, share, and we will see you in the next video.